there is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition. It lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area we call the Twilight Zone. We should start anyway. Pass me the coffee, Bob. How long are we supposed to wait? Gentlemen, I called you here for a meeting, but I don't have all day. You try my patience, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. I want the figures on the account now. I'll try to reach him again, sir. Put me through to Jake Ross's secretary. Yes, I'll hold. Williams, we're still waiting for your Mr. Ross. I'm trying to get him now, sir. Is this Jake's office, Joni? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm fine. Mr. Williams! I know he's out to lunch, but there was a conference called for 2 o'clock and it's 2.30. Yes, Mr. Misrell's office. Where is he? All right, then check. Tell him to get his keister back here fast. Well, where is your protege with the multi-million dollar automobile account? She's, uh, she's calling around the usual places, Sardis East to Colony. Don't be an idiot. He's due any moment, sir. Probably stuck at a big client lunch or something. More likely a big martini. Or three. Or four. Mr. Mizrell, I assure he you... He was that... too young to put on this account. I told you that, Williams. Much too young for so large and important an account. See? I knew it. Here's Jake now. Message regard Williams? Give me that. We have been here now for 34 minutes, Mr. Williams. This is... This is a note from Jake Ross. Would you be so kind as to share its contents with us? I can tell you the sense of it very quickly, Mr. Misrell. It's Jake's resignation. He's... he's moving to another agency. And? And he's taking the automobile account with him. That account represented a gross billing of millions of dollars a year. And how many times have you promised it to me? This is as much a shock to me as it is to you, Mr. Misrell. Don't con me! It was your pet project, yours! And it was your idea to give it to that little college greenie. Get with the program, Williams. Get with it, boy. I'm sorry. So what's left? Not only has your pet project backfired, but it sprouted wings and left the premises. I'll tell you what's left for us in my view. A deep and abiding concern about your judgment. Please. This is a push business, Williams. A push, push business. Push and drive, but personally, hands on. You don't delegate responsibilities to little boys. I don't feel well. You should know that better than anyone else. Oh. I, have, I have to leave now. It's a push, push, push all the way, all the time, right down the line. Hey, you don't look so hot. What's the matter with him? Why don't you just shut your mouth, fat boy? And who precisely are you addressing? Who do you think, you ugly, bloated, self-important old... Clean it up, Mr. Misrell. He didn't mean that, sir. I closed two new accounts. If I may, uh... Oh, no. Uh, excuse me. Please, excuse me, all of you. This is Gart Williams, age 38. A man protected by a suit of armor all held together by one bolt. Just a moment ago, someone removed the bolt and Mr. Williams' protection fell away and left him a naked target. He's been cannonaded this afternoon by all the enemies of his life. His insecurity has shelled him. His sensitivity has straddled him with humiliation. 
His deep-rooted disquiet about his own worth has zeroed in on him, landed on target, and blown him apart. Mr. Gart Williams, ad agency exec, who in just a moment will undertake a desperate search for survival in the Twilight Zone. And now, back to our story from the Twilight Zone. A Stop at Willoughby, starring Chelsea Ross, with Stacey Keach as your narrator. Oh, hi, Mr. Williams. You have some messages. I put them on your desk. Thank you, Helen. Are you okay, boss? Just, uh, let me sit down for a minute. You don't look so good. Well, the ulcer's acting up again. Oh, no. Don't worry about it. I'll be fine. You should take it easy. I can get you some lunch. Uh, no, thanks. Sure? Something plain? I think I'll, I'll go home early today. Oh, good idea. Well, can I get you anything first? Yeah. Anything at all? A sharp razor. What? And a chart of the human anatomy showing where all the arteries are. Tickets, please. Ticket? Mm, oh, right here. How are you tonight, Mr. Williams? In the absolute pink. Cold winter this year. Seems to get darker earlier than it ever has. That's the way of the world. The rich get richer and the days get shorter. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Here's your ticket. Enjoy the ride. Tickets, please. It's a push, push business, Williams. A push, push business. You gotta get with them. A push, push business. Push, 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 push. Got to get with it, boy. You got to get with it. Got to get with That's it. That's enough. Is anything wrong? What? What? Oh. Oh. No, no, no. I, I was just thinking out loud, I guess. Oh, I was afraid you were speaking to me. Not at all. Sorry. It is a boring commute, isn't it? It's easy to doze off. Yes. Yes, it is. All that darkness outside. I can barely see the landscape. To tell the truth, I never paid much attention to it. But uh, well, now that you mention it... I used to read, but I got motion sickness. So now there's nothing to do but wait for the next station, and the one after that, and I don't even know where we are at the moment. I can't see any lights. What's the next stop? <laughs> I've lost track. <laughs> That's funny. It is? Lost track. Track. Oh. At least we're not off the track. <laughs> not yet, anyway. Give it time. Well, I suppose we could be anywhere. Wait, do, do you hear that? Hear what? What's happening? M Miss? Where are you? Willoughby! This stop is Willoughby! What do you mean, Willoughby? Where's Willoughby? That's Willoughby, right outside. There's no place called Willoughby on this line. I've taken this train hundreds of times. Where's the woman I was talking to a minute ago? Woman, sir. This car's empty. And the light. Why is it so bright outside? Well, why wouldn't it be? Sun's out. The sun? It's summer. That's what she is. Mid-July. And a real warm one, too. <laughs> no, it's not. It's November. What is going on? Why are you dressed that way? That ridiculous old hat, the uniform. Where's the regular conductor? Willoughby, five minutes stop. W wait, what is this place? Already told you, Willoughby. But that's impossible. Take a look for yourself. But those clothes, the horses. What is this, a practical joke? No, sir, it's Willoughby, July 1888. Nice place, don't you think? And there's the woman I was talking to. Where did she get that parasol? Uh, you'd have to ask her. Getting off? Well, this isn't my stop. Uh, miss, you there? Why, hello, Mr. Williams. Good day to you. Uh, ho hold on, can you tell me... Shall I open the door? Uh, no, I... You ought to take a look around sometime. Peaceful, restful, where a man can slow down to a walk and live his life full measure. If you're not getting off, you'd best take a seat. Yep, right on schedule. 
All aboard! Pardon me, sir? Mm-hmm. What? Oh, what did you say? I didn't mean to bother you, but I didn't want you to miss your stop. Is this it? No, no, that's all right. Uh, you got back on. I did? Oh, I, 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 I must have dozed off again. I don't blame you. At least you got a little rest. I guess I did. A little rest and an idiotic dream. Why do you say that? Ever hear of a town named Willoughby? I don't think so. Willoughby where? Willoughby, Connecticut, I guess, or Willoughby, New York. Not on this run. Are you sure? There's no Willoughby on this line. Westport, Sogatuck, next stop. Hello, Gart. Jane. I didn't hear you come home. That's all right. I figured you'd notice sooner or later. Oh, I see. So that's how it's going to be. If you say so. What are your plans this evening? Do you care? So you're going to get quietly plastered and sing the old college songs. No, no. No songs. I'm all sung out. Then you're just going to get drunk while I sit here and watch. You can join in if you like. No, thanks. I don't have anything to celebrate. Neither do I. It was just one of those days. I guess it was. How would you know? Bob Blair's wife phoned. She said he'd been in a meeting with you. You got hysterical or something. She called to find out how you were. They were all very solicitous, all the boys at the meeting. The kind of free-flowing compassion that spells relief for everybody because it means I'm the victim, not them. That's a big word with you, isn't it? Victim. Pour me another drink, will you, Jane? Would you spare me your little homilies for once and just give me a simple, honest answer? Did you throw away your job this afternoon? Did you wreck your entire career? It appears not. Mr. Mizrell phoned before I left the office. And? He has found it in that giant, oversized heart of his to forgive me. Forgive you for what? What's the difference? That gracious, somewhat obese gentleman will allow me to continue in his employ simply because he's such a human-type fella. Real people person. And one small additional reason. If I were to go to a competitive agency, I might take a lot of business with me. Go on. That's it. That's all of it. I'm tired, Janie. I'm tired and I'm sick. Then you're in the right ward. We specialize in people who are sick and tired. Gart, I'm sick and tired of a husband who lives in a permanent state of self-pity. A husband with a bleeding heart sensitivity. He unfurls like a flag whenever he decides the competition is too rough for him. Some people aren't built for competition, Janie. Or big, pretentious houses they can't afford like this one. Or rich communities they don't feel comfortable in. Comfortable? Let me get this straight. You're not comfortable here? That's the one thing. Country club memberships that they wear like a badge of status. And you would prefer... I would prefer, if anyone cares, a job, any job at all, where I could be myself. And who's that? You know, where I wouldn't have to climb on a stage and go through a masquerade every morning at night and mouth all the dialogue and play the executive and make believe I'm the bright young man on his way up because I'm not that person, Janie. You've tried to make me that person, but it isn't me. You're right. It isn't. It isn't me at all. And I'm not very young. I'm a soon-to-be-old, very uncompetitive, rather dull, quite uh, uninspired, average type of guy with a wife who has an appetite that won't quit. And where would you be if it weren't for my appetite? I know where I'd like to be. And where is that? A place called Willoughby. 
A little town I chartered inside my head. A place I manufactured in a dream. An odd dream, a very odd dream. Willoughby. It was summer, very warm. The kids were barefoot. One of them carried a fishing pole. Oh, please. And the main street looked like, like, like a Courier and Ives painting. Bandstand, old-fashioned stores, bicycles. I've never seen such, such serenity. It was the way people must have lived a hundred years ago. Crazy dream. Gart. You should have seen it, Janie, this Willoughby. It wasn't just a place or a time. It was like a doorway that leads to sanity. Nothing serious, Gart. It's just that you were born too late, and your taste is a little cheap. You're the kind of man who could be satisfied with a summer afternoon and an ice wagon pulled by a horse. My mistake. My error. My miserable, tragic error. To marry a man whose big dream in life is to be Huckleberry Finn. That's what you want, isn't it? Something like that. A place, a time, where a man can live his full measure. And what does that mean? I don't know, but I'd like to find out. It's what that conductor said. A place where a man can live his full measure. That's where I'd like to be. Yes? Mr. Williams? Uh, yes, Helen. You've got a 2 o'clock, a 2.30, and a 2.45. Is that right? So I was wondering, should I cancel the 2.30 or the other one? What? The 2.45. Which? Uh, oh, the 2.30 is the man from the baby food company. He's got an idea for an ad campaign, remember? And the one after that is about the frozen fish account. Uh-huh. Tough call, huh? No. Well, I mean, it is. No, I, I mean, I'm... I was just wondering. Which one to cancel? Uh, not that. What would happen, do you suppose, if I weren't here? When? For the meeting. Either one. Take your pick. Me? Or both. You want me to cancel both meetings? It's a hypothetical question, Helen. Oh, but you are here. Of course I am. But what if... What if one fine day I just wasn't? Well, I guess they'd have to wait around till you got back. And if I didn't come back... Then they'd reschedule. And if I never came back? Never? Ever. Not in a hundred years. Well, in that case, somebody else would get the account. Is that all that would happen? And I'd miss you. You would? We all would. Uh, it's almost two, so should I tell them you're not back from lunch yet? Who? The two o'clock and the two-thirty. No. Uh, no, I'm here. You have their files? Somewhere. I brought them in. I'm sure you did. But if you haven't had time to look at them yet, maybe I should tell them to reschedule. That would be a lie. Not exactly. I can say you were at a long lunch. No more lies, Helen. Not in this office. I don't have the stomach for it. Hello again. It's you. Uh, please, have a seat. You look like you caught up on your sleep. Feeling better? Oh, tolerable. And you? No complaints. It is a bit of a grind, though, isn't it? These long commutes. Well, actually, I only take this train for the scenery. Some view. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the scenic route. If you like miles and miles of pitch black fields, you can't even see the towns. So there's nothing much to do but grin and bear it. It's an opportunity. It is? For conversation. Do you know... I've never spoken to another soul on this train. They're all so wrapped up in their own melodramas. Misery loves company. So? We might as well be miserable together while we're sitting here. Has to be more interesting that way. Did you ever... What? It's silly. But did you ever want to get off at a stop where you've never been before just to see what it would be like? Which stop are you thinking of? Oh, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Pick one and see what happens. Hmm. Well, you'd be on your own. Nobody waiting. No car. I wouldn't mind. There's nobody waiting for me anyway. Would you? Not anymore. Forgive me. Did I say something wrong? Oh, it's just a... a 
This is going to sound strange. I, I didn't mean to get personal. I, I think we're having the same dream. <laughs> what? what? Sharing the same fantasy, in a way. Remember the last trip when I dozed off? We spoke, and I asked you about the next stop. I was afraid you'd miss your station. You see, I, I dreamed we came to a station I'd never seen before. You got off as if you lived there. I saw you outside, walking around. In the dark? It was a bright summer day. I'm beginning to like this dream. And did you get off the train so we could have an adventure? That's the problem. I wanted to, but I didn't. Why not? I wish I knew. Willoughby. What did you say? Well, last week you asked me about a town called Willoughby, Mr. Williams. Oh, yes. I looked it up. No such place, as far as I could see. You're sure? Every old timetable I could find. Nothing with that name. Not even close. Thanks, anyway. Where did you hear about it? Oh, I... I must have dreamed it. Probably did. Old-fashioned name. Sounds nice, though. It does, doesn't it? Nice place to visit, maybe. Don't know if I'd like to live there. You never know. No, you don't. Take it easy now, Mr. Williams. Next stop, Stanford. Stanford, next stop. Is that the name of it? Willoughby? It was. You know, it seems familiar. They used to have different names, these towns, a long time ago. It could be you read about it in a book. It could be we both did. I don't have much time to read. It's almost as if I'm remembering something. Don't tell me you believe in past lives. That's nonsense. <laughs> no, it's not that. But the name does sound familiar, and I do like the sound of it. I do too. Willoughby. 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 What did you say? Next stop, Willoughby. The woman who was sitting there. Woman, sir? In that seat, where is she? No other fares in this car, sir. But it was only a minute ago. Good day to you. Day? All out for Willoughby! It is day. Getting out, sir? Quick, what year is this? Why, 1888, sir. What else would it be? I don't know. I've been away for a while, have you? Lost track? Y yes, in a sense. Uh, how long is the stop at the station? Long enough to drop off and pick up. You have a ticket for Willoughby? No, I... Then you'd best take your seat. Though it is a fine, balmy day. A place where a man can live his life full measure. Yes. Hello there. Hi. You did it. You got off. Of course. This is where I live. It's such a lovely afternoon. And I do believe I'll take a walk in the park with some of my friends. You're quite welcome to join us if you'd like. All aboard! Wait, the train started moving. Goodbye, Mr. Williams. If I could jump to the platform... Oh, no, don't do that. I can make it. Too late. I can make it. Don't. It wouldn't be safe. Another time. Yes, an another time. We'll make a day of it. these people. A full car, Mr. Williams. Always is this time of day. There's your seat right over there. The woman I was talking to. I'm not sure that... I... Uh, she, she's not here now. Oh? Maybe she went to the club car. Or got off. Where? No stop so far. She got off at Willoughby. <laughs> you on that kick again? I told you there's no such town. I know. That's what you said. Sounds like a nice place, though. A real nice place. Tickets! Next time. Next time I swear I'm going to do it no matter what I'm going to get off it. Will it be? Yes, Ellen? It's the big man on line one. Should I tell him he'll call him right back? Don't bother. I'll take it. Mr. Misrell, morning, sir. Push, push, push. 
My thoughts exactly. You have to be bright, Williams. Bright with pattern, hipness, and the whole thing push, 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 push. That's what the client wants. I'm working on it. Tomorrow morning, I'll need at least a preliminary storyboard. You know what I want, a solid format with some pops for the product, leading up to one big pop at the finish. And not just any pop this time, light, color, explosions. I see it as a field artillery attack. We show the audience with mortar fire, lay down some tactical air support, and establish a beachhead in their cerebral cortex. Then we send in ground troops and occupy the territory. There. What do you say to that? I'll do what I can. Do more than you can. With me, Williams, aspire. Dream big and then get behind your dreams big time. Push, push. Well, I haven't seen the ratings on the show. No, uh, no, no, but it was the time slot the sponsor wanted. Uh, hold on a second, will you? Y yes? They were what? No, wait, wait. Helen? Yes? What film outfit did the commercials on the Bradbury account? The negatives are all scratched. They're screaming bloody murder at me. I'll send a fax. Oh, and Mr. Misrell would like to see you in his office. I'm gonna have to check it out for you, okay? Mr. Misrell, sir, he got disconnected. He seemed rather insistent. Are you all right? You look so pale. Oh, I'd like to be, I'd like to be alone now. Not the ulcer again? Oh, please, just go. I'll be right outside if you need me. Janie, this is Gart, honey. Stay there, will you? Things are gonna be different from now on, you'll see. I just want you to stay there, I'm coming home. Janie, Janie, please listen. I've had it, understand? I can't go on for another day, another hour. This is it, I I've gotta get out of here, Janie. Janie, help me, will you? Please, please help me. Janie? Janie? Another scotch, Mr. Williams? No, thank you. Pretty empty in here today. Well, that's because it's too early. Most people don't hit the club car until after work. <laughs> Wait till the commuter run. They'll line up like kids in a candy store. I bet they do. You going home early today, Mr. Williams? Yeah. Yeah, my wife's waiting for me. Oh, she is, huh? That's nice. At least I think she is. You call her and tell her? That I did. I just hope she got the message. Oh, I bet she did. Gonna take her out for dinner and everything? If she's there. Well, if she's not, you can just kick back and watch the game. Have the place to yourself. You win either way. <laughs> That's right. I'm the winner, not the loser. That's the way to look at it. Let me ask you something. You know that woman? Which one? She rides the train the same time I do. Except today, because I'm running ahead. Uh-huh. What does she look like? Well, she wears an old-fashioned long dress, and she carries a parasol. And... <laughs> in here? Oh, no. No, I'm sorry. Not in here. That's not what she wears on the train. Only in Willoughby. Willoughby? Where's that? That's just it. I don't know. Ah, oh, forget about it. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just thought she might have come in here. Just till she gets to her stop. And not many women in here today. So I see. You okay, Mr. Williams? A1. Top drawer. See you next time. Sure thing. If there is a next time. Oh, you changing schedules? I might take some time off. Good deal. Vacation, huh? That's right. A vacation. A long one. Ticket? Hey, you're early, Mr. Williams. What? Decided to call it a day, huh? Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes, you could say that. Well, enjoy the trip. Oh, a conductor. Something else? You wouldn't happen to have a light, would you? You want a cigarette? It matches in the club car. 
No worse than a drink, I guess, if that's your poison. But you can't light up here. You have to wait till we stop at a platform. Of course. I was just wondering if you could uh, bend the rules this time. It's been quite a day. I need to unwind before I get home. I used to smoke two packs a day. Had to give it up, though. Doctor's orders. Right. Said it was cutting years off my life. So I decided to stick around. You want to do that, don't you? Yes. As a matter of fact, I do. That's why I'm going home. There you are, then. I have another question for you. Yeah? That woman, the one I talked to. Which woman is that now? Have you seen her in the other cars? Can't say as I have. Would you take a look? If I see her, I'll let you know. Thanks. I appreciate it. Well, some people didn't go to work, though. Cold day. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's it. Be colder tonight. That's what they say. Looks like snow. You keep warm now. I'll try. Next stop, Stanford. Stanford. Willoughby, next stop. Next stop, Willoughby. This is where I get off. Stop the train. Yes, sir. That's your station, Willoughby. Need a hand with your baggage? I don't have any. Nothing at all? Not a thing. Well, good day to you, then. Yes, it is. It really is a beautiful day. All aboard! Hi, Mr. Williams. Uh, hi. We're going fishing. Well, I can see that. Catch the big ones today, huh? <laughs> the biggest you ever saw. Want to come? Uh, maybe some other time. It's pretty hot today. Yeah, we're gonna get a sunburn, then go swimming. That'll be fun. Come on, we got an extra pole, and there's plenty of fish. I'll bet there are. Bye, boys. Catch one for me, okay? Sure. Such a lovely day. Too nice to stay indoors. I want to hear the band. Yes, the band. I love the sound. So do I. Beautiful. Did you say something? Not really. I'm... It's you. Hello. Oh, it is you. I'm glad you decided to join us. I was on my way down to the park. Where? Oh, that's right. You just got here. Come with me. It's not far. I'll introduce you to all my friends, just as I promised. Then they'll be your friends, too. I'd like that. I feel as if they already are. Then later, perhaps we'll take a stroll by the lake. It's truly splendid with the moon and the stars. And... I like it here right now, with you. The trees, the stores... The shops are my weakness, I must confess. <laughs> You've got some wonderful antiques here. Antiques? That beautiful grandfather clock in the window, for example, a classic. I wonder how much they're asking. Oh, it's quite reasonable. I'm sure, even though it's new. But it can't be. Come along now. We'll be late. Again. Again. It's no use. There's no pulse. Uh, it's a crying shame. He wasn't very old. You say he just jumped off the train? Right here, in the snow, in the middle of nowhere. Never saw anything like it. Poor Mr. Williams. He shouted something, ran out, opened the door, and that's the last I saw of him. Thought he went to have a smoke or something. Now yeah, a heart attack, probably. Yeah, if the fall didn't get him. Well, he must have died instantly then. At least he didn't suffer. Look at his face. Like he's at peace. Yeah, that's the way to look at it. All clear. Let's 
Move it out. Where should we take the body? Out of the local mortuary for now. Willoughby's funeral parlor? That's the one. They'll hold him till somebody contacts the family. All right, let's put him on the stretcher. Okay, you ready? One, two, three, lift! Mr. Gart Williams, who withstood the slings and arrows that come with life in the fast lane for as long as he could bear them, and eventually sought respite for his torment in the only place left open to him, under a gravestone, who climbed onto a world that went too fast for him and then finally jumped off. Mr. Gart Williams, who might now tell us what really awaits us in the great beyond, because this too is very much a part of the Twilight Zone. <laughs>